Hi, welcome to module 5 of lecture 8. In this module we're going to discuss the first class of um, probability mass functions that we generally see often in political science. The first one um, is associated most, most generally with, with trials. Dichotomous events that can either um, be yes or no or A or B or whatever. Um, so, to begin, before we begin though, um, I want to refer back to what we talked about in the previous few modules, the concept of a data generating process or DGP, and data generating process. This is the underlying process that generates the data we observe in the real world. And this is a tie between our theoretical construction of what we believe is happening um, in the world to the probability mass or distribution function that we're using to approximate what we expect to see in the real world given the underlying data generating process that we're considering. So there's a clear connection between those two things. Um, normally what we learn in, in statistics at least early on, is to apply the relevant um, canned um, probability function to our situation, expecting that it should be sufficiently good to a sufficient good approximator of what we need to do with it. Um, sometimes this is the case, sometimes it's not, and as you go on in um, learning your methodology, you'll learn to better find, and early on you learn to better find a different probability mass function that more closely um, applies to your particular data generating process. And a lot of the stuff you end up seeing is um, the application of various tests used to distinguish between different PMFs or PDFs used to um, be relevant to your data generating process. If you go on into methodology further, then you start learning about how to develop your own um, probability functions in order to better match your particular um, empirical scenario, your, your particular data generating process, and provide a better match to, to the underlying theory that's, that's driving your hypotheses. Um, now, at this point, that's all much later on. Here, what we're going to do is discuss a couple of classes of um, probability mass functions that occur most often and are most commonly used. Um, this class, as I said, is, is um, associated with trials, and the, the class generally associated with the binomial distribution. That's the picture you saw, you saw earlier um, in the previous, no, two modules ago. I showed you a picture from the book. That was binomial distribution. So we're going to go through this stuff in more generality first. So, in this module. So let's begin with um, a single, the probability distribution associated with a single draw from a trial. This is known as the Bernoulli distribution. And it looks like this. The probability that some random variable y equals lowercase y is equal, oh, sorry, no one there, <laughs> p to the y times 1 minus p to the 1 minus y. So, and here p is the probability of drawing um, 1. So this comes with it. This comes with a very strong assumption, no two really. One is you have a dichotomous event. So either it's yes or no, up or down, um, vote or not vote. Any dichotomous event is represent, can be represented by this type of probability mass function. P here is the probability of drawing the positive result. The one instead of the zero, um, the voting instead of the not voting, whatever. Um, you choose one of those, that's the positive one, choose one of the two dichotomous possibilities, that's the positive one, and the probability of that happening by itself is P. You'll see that Bernoulli is really simple. If I put Y equals 1 into this equation, then I just get back P. And if I put Y equals 0 into this equation, I get back 1 minus P, which is, by definition, the probability, the probability that you don't draw the 1, right? If p is probably you draw the 1, then 1 minus p is the probability you don't draw the 1, or in other words, you draw the 0, the, the no, the yes or you know, the no as opposed to the yes, the don't vote as opposed to vote, whatever. And that's the Bernoulli distribution. So it requires um, A, that you have a dichotomous 
pair of events. Um, B, that they're independent. So if I were to do this again, I can't have the second time I do this, the outcome of the second time I do this, be dependent on the outcome of the first time I do this. So it must be independent. Also, if we're going to utilize these, if we're going to use this particular um, uh, PMF productively, we're going to have to be able to observe positive draws, where we have to see when we draw the one or when we draw the yes or the voting or whatever. If we don't observe it, then it's not a very useful method. We have to observe each and every one of those things. Although it's not a very useful method, we can't actually compare it to our, um, we can't compare the theory to the experiment if we don't observe the actual guesses that the theory is proposing that you know, is, is providing a mechanism to see the probability they exist. That was a horrible sentence. But the point is, if we don't actually observe the yes, then a probability mass function which specifies the chance of seeing a yes is not very helpful. Hope that's a little more clear. Um, the Bernoulli isn't used very often. Mostly it's used as the, as the basis for the much more commonly used binomial distribution. And this is the one you saw a picture of earlier. The binomial distribution is for repeated trials. So here, the probability um, that y here, and y is going to be multiple trials here, equals k, where k is some number of positives, is going to be equal to n choose k. Remember back from the previous lecture, we discussed combinatorics and said this is one of the reasons, this is one of the ways we're going to see the combinatorics. Here it is again. This is a combination, n choose k, um, uh, times p to the k. And again, p is the probability that you draw the 1, times 1 minus p to the n minus k. Now you can see very clearly, I hope, I shouldn't do a dot stick around. You can see very clearly, I hope, the, the um, relationship between this and the Bernoulli equ um, equation. Here you have the probability of drawing um, a single positive one, so it's p to the one, or p to the zero, depending on if you draw one or not. Here you want k times, a positive k times, so it's p to the k. And then it's one minus p to the n minus k is a chance of drawing not the one. And k plus n minus k is n. Here, an additional assumption, in addition to the previous assumptions we had to do for the Bernoulli, is that you have n draws. So actually, you have two. So there was one parameter in the Bernoulli distribution, which was the probability of drawing a positive. The binomial distribution has the exact same probability parameter p, but it also has another parameter n, which is the number of total draws you're, you're dealing with. As the number of total draws changes, the shape of the function changes, and more closely approximates a nice smooth um, distribution, um, close to the normal distribution. Um, well. So this is, um, this is the, the equation for the, the PMF of the Bernoulli distribution. Let's, before we move on, let's talk a little bit about, about this and where it comes from. Um, and again, this is the same assumption as before. You have to have independent draws. If the chance of drawing, one P, drawing a 1 in the third draw is different, relates to the um, probability of drawing a 1 in the second draw, uh, this is not going to work. It has to be independent. But um, where does it come from? Well, it comes from the exact same place that expansions of x plus z to the fifth come from. There's an n, there's a, there's a n choose k in there as well. And that comes from the number of ways you can get stuff. So for instance, let's say you had uh, three draws, right? Three draws, each probability p. Well, how would you get three positives, three ones out of that draw? Well, there's probably p in the first one, probably p in the second one, and probably p in the third one. We've already said that, that, that um, f for independent draws, right, the probability of a of 1 and 1 and 1, right, remember back from the previous lecture, for independent draws, that's just the probability of 1 times the probability of the second one times the probability of the third one, which is p times p times p, or p to the third. There's only one way to get three ones, is if every single trial turns up one, and therefore there's only one way to get that particular probability. Now, if we take three total draws and want three positives, that's equal to n factorial, so sorry, three factorial, 
over 3 factorial times 0 factorial. These cancel out 1. The 0 factorial equals 1. So this is 1. So we see the combinatorics spits out the exact right thing for us. It tells us how many ways you can get that number of 1s. Um, and there's only one way to do that. Now, what about if you wanted two ones? Well, now the first two, so we could have one one zero, or one zero one, or zero one one. Right? So there are three ways now to get two ones. So the probability of getting two ones is equal to the probability of getting one one zero plus the probability of getting one zero one plus the probability of getting zero one one. We have to add those together. Now. What were each of those? Well, probability of getting a 1 in the first one is p, times the probability of getting a 1 in the second one is p, times the probability of getting a 1 in the third one is 1 minus p. Then we're going to add the probability of getting a 1 in the first one and the third one, but a 0 in the second one. I think I just said a 1 in the last one. This would have been 0 in that one. And then again, the probability of getting 0 first and a 1 and a 1. These are all the same thing, and this equals 3 times p squared times 1 minus p. Now note the binomial equation from the previous one was, in this case, 3 choose 2, p to the squared because there's two 1s, times 1 minus p to the 1 because 3 minus 2 is 1. Now 3 choose 2 is equal to 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial is 1 factorial times 2 factorial. That equals 6 over 2, or 3. So again, we have the, the combinatorics tells us there are three ways to obtain two ones out of three draws. And therefore, there should be a 3 in front of um, the binomial PMF. We keep going. Um, 3, 1 positive is, is very similar, except now you have 1 minus p squared, or you have um, p times 1 minus p, oh, sorry, uh, 1 minus p times p plus 1 minus p, or 1 minus p squared times p. This equals 3 times p times 1 minus p squared, and again you can do the um, binomial, the um, combinatorics out front, 3 choose 1 equals 3 factorial, 3 minus 1 factorial, 3 minus 1 quantity factorial is 2 factorial times 1 factorial, and again that's equal to 3. So again, it does it correctly. And if you're, if you're not sure where I'm, how I'm getting these combinatorics so fast, go back to the previous lecture, we had a whole, whole uh, module on combinatorics, this is just that, this is all using the same equation that n choose k equals n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. Okay. And finally, the last one, how do you get three zeros? Well, you only get three zeros if every single trial is zero. There's one and only one way to do that. So the probability of getting three zeros is one minus p cubed. Again, that works out because p to the zero. So p to the k, if k is zero, is p to the zero. That's one, so that's just fine. Out front, you have a 3 choose 0. 3 choose 0 is the same as 3 choose 3. It's 3 factorial over 0 factorial times 3 minus 0 factorial is just 3 factorial again, which equals 1. So again, that's where it comes from. It all works out nicely. The combinatorics allow you to deal with multiple possibilities of drawing things, and it takes, it takes into account the fact that you're going to have to that the order doesn't matter here, you're just adding up all the possible ways of getting something, and the combinations do that for you. It's just where they come from. Um, this is the most common one you use because we often have scenarios in, in social sciences where you have a dichotomous type of action and it's happening over and over and over again, and the goal is to see whether or not, for instance, like voting, and the goal is to see the underlying process that produces that distribution of um, voting outcomes. And we believe that that process, if we believe these things are independent, and you know, and as it might be if you're, for instance, surveying the whole population and people don't know each other at all, um, who you survey, then if they're all independent, then if there's some underlying chance of voting, if that's what we believe is happening here, and they're all 
responding to an underlying chance um, at random, so there's all different realizations of that random process. Then you put them all together, the number, the distribution of vote counts you should expect should follow this binomial distribution. So this kind of com thing comes up a bunch. Less frequently is the multinomial distribution, in which you have more than two possible outcomes from some event. So if each capital y1 equals the number of times the first option happens, and then yk is the number of times the kth option happens, sorry, the nth option happens, then this is going to equal, I'm sorry, I should use k here, the kth option happens, the kth option here, n factorial over y1 factorial dot 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 yk factorial, so it's all multiplying together, times a product from i equals 1 to k of p uh, sub i to the y i, where each pi is the probability of each different um, possible outcome happening. So as before we had p and 1 minus p, now we have more than um, we have more than two, so we have p1 and p2 and p3 and all different probabilities of each event happening. And we have to make sure that the sum of all these things that could happen has to equal n, because otherwise, um, this is a k, by the way, not an n. That's i equals one to k as well, because something's gotta happen, um, so one of these outcomes must actually occur. Um, that's the multinomial one, it's used less frequently in, in sort of science, political science. But you will see it sometimes, um, so there it is. Great. So that's it for this this topic. Um, in the next uh, module, we're going to talk more about um, a different kind of data generating process relating to event counts. Thank you very much.